Hello everybody and welcome to episode 27 of the Daily Critique and today I'm going through five images by Vijay Moeda who is an Indian photographer and most of these images were taken in the Ladakh region of India. Uh, there is a fairly common theme as far as the critique goes because I think quite a few of these are lacking a bit of breathing space, a bit of room around the subject so we're going to discuss that a bit as well as doing a general critique and uh, discussing processing a little bit. So let's get started. So here are the five images that VJ sent in and I think it's fair to say that uh, they're quite an eclectic mix given that we only have five photographs here because these two black and white frames, um, firstly they're, they're black and white and the other three are colour. Generally I would recommend trying to, to stay consistent whether you're working in colour or, or black and white, certainly when you present your photos. Um, but also um, in, in the approach to composition and subject matter, these two black and white images are more minimalist, more uh, graphical, whilst um, the other three are perhaps more in, in the grand landscape style. Um, so uh, interesting to see that variety, but we'll, we'll go through it uh, through each image uh, one by one in Photoshop. And uh, we'll start with this one. Um, nice repetition in the in the foreground here with these lovely wavy lines. Of course, sand is, is wonderful to shoot in this way, particularly if you can get the light to glance across the texture to help bring out um, those uh, wonderful shapes. Um, and, and to that end, I, I think it would be better if the light wasn't quite so harsh here. Um, I think you could make more of this foreground in, in that way because there is quite a lot of contrast um, and particularly with this uh, this central area of, of sand just here and, and some of these shadows creeping through, it'd be nice to see something a little softer. Um, and from a compositional standpoint, um, it's it feels a bit unstructured. Although you have this, this lovely texture in the foreground, there doesn't appear to be any approach to arrangement and actually it feels a little bit flat to me. Um, I think if you had something in, in the foreground, um, either centrally or maybe off to the right, uh, to create a sense of perspective, that might help because that doesn't quite come through with the, the ripples there. And, um, you know, there's a few distractions, that little um, bit of uh, plant creeping in on the edge of the frame there. Um, and then from a depth standpoint, I think there's just a, a total lack of, of depth really and, and yet it doesn't have the simplicity to stand out as, as a graphic image either. I mean wonderfully clear conditions like this can be brilliant for shooting distant views because of course you can see all the amazing uh, colours in the hill behind here but um, there's, there's a lack of atmospheric depth so there's no haze. Um, there's no clouds or anything to break up what is effectively just a solid blue shape at the top of the image. Um, so it, it all makes the photo a little bit overly simplistic, too illustrative um, for, for my liking. I'd like to see some form of interpretation, whether it's through light or composition, um, something to take it beyond uh, just a literal representation of the scene, which I think is one of the things you should always aim for in photography. Um, so this, this does um, move more in that direction. Um, in terms of the uh, in interpretive side anyway, using using a long exposure to create a bit of atmosphere and obviously this is taken uh, after sunset I would imagine or, or possibly before sunrise. Um, and uh, there's, there's some nice soft light here and of course these long exposures at, at the coast are, are a little bit um, overdone but um, nevertheless uh, quite, quite effective at uh, simplifying all those complex textures that you would otherwise get. Um, so uh, I, I do still like these images. The one thing I would say is that because they are so commonplace now, um, th there really has to be an onus on, on composition and, and saying something new. And whilst I think this photo is, is successful in one way in that, that it separates every little element of this foreground, which is quite nice. They've, every rock's got a bit of water around it, more or less. Um, so, so that characteristic is really nice. Um, but I'd, I'd love to see something a, a bit more imaginative done with, with the foreground rather than this very uh, simple approach uh, that VJ has taken here. Um, and uh, I will add, add something to that, which is if you do like using these long exposures, please, please don't forget your composition because it can be a bit of a cheat to creating this magical atmospheric photo. 
um, and and composition, if anything, becomes more important because those filters just simplify all the textures. And uh, as I've discussed in a previous video, that can kind of expose any uh, shortcomings in your composition. Um, I would say from an editing standpoint, I would probably um, make the foreground a little bit lighter. So I'm just um, setting a white point for the foreground here and holding down Alt to uh, see where that's set. And the, um, the editing videos are going to come at some point. Um, it's uh, taking me a lot longer than I anticipated to, to make them. So yeah, I'd, I'd probably do a brightening like that to the foreground, um, maybe not quite that far. Um, and correspondingly, I would I would darken the sky a bit um, to hold in the eye and, and maybe lose a bit of the top portion of the sky um, to create a, a better um, a level of asymmetry between the, uh, the foreground and the background, um, or the sky even. Uh, <laughs> I need to clear these crops, right, there we go. Yeah, so um, I'd, I'd just lose a, a chunk of that sky there. Um, <laughs> you can see just how close that is to a third. And, and that to me is probably not a coincidence because it looks pretty much perfectly a third. Um, and that's actually one of the problems I have with um, the overlays that you get on camera screen. So a lot of people now compose looking at the back screen of uh, the LCD monitor of their camera and they have these thirds grids overlaid. And I think they're really bad actually because they um, can influence your composition in, in ways that aren't actually beneficial because here you just have too much negative space at the top of the frame. And I think it's better to lose some of that and shift the horizon a little higher. Um, yep, so uh, that's that's the second image. Uh, now we're on to the, the crux of the video, if you like, and that's around breathing space for your subjects. I think in many ways this is the strongest image um, of, of the set, actually. Um, I really like uh, both the black and white conversion and, and the general compositional idea here um, and these these wonderful shapes. This, this curve is obviously the main focus of the image and Obviously, I've traced that particularly poorly, but um, you get you get the idea. I love that that shape there and this enormous pool to the right. And there's a, there's a um, a strange imbalance here that I think is actually very effective. So I I, I do like that. Um, and if we just go back to the original, um, actually before we do that, let's just uh, discuss um, the uh, the original of, of this frame because you can see that VJ has actually um, flipped it the other way around so the mountains are shifted to the other side um, and he's cropped it square and I think that actually was a good way of making the most of um, this original frame because it was uh, very asymmetrical um, th this feels very awkward to me this composition as it is I think losing the water was the right decision um, but it doesn't read as well um, this way around as it does flipped. So actually I think whilst I wouldn't do that myself, um, VJ's decision was a good one from an aesthetic standpoint. I think it's much better to have the mountains on the left because we read left to right um, than, than to have it the other way around. So that's, uh, that's interesting from that perspective. Uh, and then um, we'll just have a look at the color version here. So the reason that the black and white works so well is because you have all these wonderful blues um, in the majority of the image, but the warm color on the mountain behind the sunlight um, really is at odds with that. And I think it slightly spoils the image as you see it in color. Um, so again, I think it's a really good choice to go to black and white. You could maybe introduce a bit more contrast and, and brightness into the foreground um, to uh, to really make this pop a bit more. Um, we can have a, a play with doing that actually in Photoshop. Um, so I'd, I'd just have a wrap, play around. I mean, firstly, if you've got a black and white, make sure you've got white points. Um, it looks like we've got a very local one at the top there, but I'd, I'd certainly make sure that um, you are using the full range you can. Um, and I'm just seeing how this affects the top portion of the image and I'm gonna mask out the bottom portion um, other way around. Command I, whoa, what have I done there? That's not what I want. <laughs> uh, so invert the mask, there we go. Um, and then I will just lift the foreground and, and add some contrast there as well. Um, because I, th I think bringing out this lovely uh, edge to the shore here is uh, is worth doing. Yeah, so, so some, something like that. And uh, perhaps I'd, I'd spend more time working on this top portion of the image here because that's also looking a little bit flat. Um, but but really, uh, the back to the composition, 
Um, I just think that there's too many proximity issues here. So we've got the mountain that runs really very close to the top of the frame here. So it creates a sort of trap for the eye. Um, you sort of get jammed in there. Um, and I think this curve is lovely, but it just needs that amount of space, uh, not that amount of space. And the same on the left-hand side here. So I think having uh, room to breathe in images, whatever your subject is, whether the subject is a curve or whether it's um, you know an, an item, a, a focal point, um, you have to keep that spacing um, or everything can feel a little bit like it's being jammed into the frame, like you couldn't shoot wide enough or couldn't step back enough. And, uh, and similarly with this one, now this is really quite a minimalist image in its approach and unfortunately I think it's totally unsuccessful because it just isn't perfect enough, which, you know, v VJ had no control over that, but this isn't a shot that I would attempt with this kind of subject. Because when I see shots like this, I think of the work of people like uh, Bruce Percy, for example, who has an extremely minimalist graphic style. And I just want this pool to be a perfect round shape. And I don't want any of these little plants sticking out of the um, the sand here. And I especially don't want all of these footprints just cluttering all this texture. Um, so everything about this actually feels quite messy. And that mess has only been exposed by the very simplistic approach to composition and, and particularly allowing the sky to blow out like this. Um, so, I mean, I, I really do like these images, but they're extremely hard to pull off well. That's why people who do it very well um, get the recognition they deserve because um, it requires a lot of work to find these perfect scenes and um, it does require compositional skill as well to uh, to get them bang on which I, I think you really need to um, when you're when you're trying something quite so simple and in this case on the compositional side we've got the same proximity issues the pool is just too close to the edge of the frame here and the bush for me is is too close um, to uh, to the other side, to the right-hand side of the frame. Um, so those are both issues, and, and maybe there's a bit too much white sky as well, and I'd, I'd crop down something like that and lose a bit of uh, sand to match. Um, incidentally, it's not always the case that um, I aim to have significant room between my subjects and the edge of the frame. There are compositional um ways that you can deal with that, and uh, actually I'll just pause the video quickly and hop to a shot that gives an example. So this is probably the most extreme example I have in my own portfolio of really forcing the subject um, towards the edges of the frames. And and the reason why this works for me personally is I'm kind of creating a, a frame within a frame. Um, the, the focal point has a reasonable amount of space given the amount of space that it exists within so um, it's it's got this small amount of space to exist within and the spacing then to the frame is in proportion to the space in which the subject exists and uh, and that's a, a concept that I think um, is, is worth thinking about um, from a from a compositional side and you can see there's a massive juxtaposition here. I mean, the whole purpose of the photo is to massively outweigh the mountain with uh, this this mass of, of snow formations in the foreground. So it's not a hard and fast rule that you need to provide space to the edge of, of edge of your frame. Um, but certainly when you've got a composition like this, which is just got two elements i think those kind of ideas become increasingly important that it looks like you've uh, you framed it with plenty of room uh, so finally on to what i think is probably the most successful um, photo in the set um, finally we have some nice lighting here unfortunately all of those previous images were hampered by less than ideal lighting and uh, this one just shows the advantage um, that you can get from nice light and i'm sure that idea isn't a, a novel one to any of you but um you there's a really good sense of depth here that comes both from the haze in the background, but also the transition of color. So we have all these warm colors in the foreground, the cool colors in the back, and that creates a sense of depth. Um, so I think that's very effective. Really nice to have the uh, the buildings here in the foreground to provide a sense of scale. And I, and I actually quite like the um, the idea of you know humans living in what is a very barren landscape here, but with these majestic views. Um, and the processing is well hand handled too. But from a compositional standpoint, um, 
firstly perhaps there's a little bit too much sky there so I'd, I'd crop somewhere there because that gives a nice gap between the clouds and the top of the frame and it doesn't include quite so much empty space at the at the top there so that would be a good place to crop to um, but this peak here does form a subject and again that's just too close to the edge of the frame and again at the bottom here the, the buildings just feel like they're too close to the bottom edge of the frame. So we can see this uh, fairly consistent issue popping up throughout these images. Um, it's the same idea every time. And I often recommend to people who I'm teaching that they try and shoot the composition that they think works the best and, and they think about the positioning of their subjects within the frame, but then always shoot a wider image. Certainly when I was learning, that was very helpful to me. Um, I'd quite often go back and, and actually crop down from the wider image just to get that extra bit of space. Um, and it's a nice catch-all approach when you're out in the field to, to making sure that, that you have got the room um, that you need around your subjects. So thank you very much for sending those in VJ, um, really nice to see images from a region that I am totally unfamiliar with um, and, uh, and a good, uh, good images um, in terms of the critique as well because it gave me that opportunity to talk about subject spacing. So thank you very much and uh, I've only got a couple of other videos lined up so please do send in uh, your photos if you'd like to take part in the critique yourself.